This is the third video in our Misting Fundamentals series. It is time to talk about how the fluid behaves inside the tubing and add two more rules to our pressure engineering rule set. While tubing seems like the simplest component to understand, after all, there are no moving parts, the flow and pressure of the fluid inside don't always behave as you think they should. Developing an understanding of that behavior is critical to ensuring that each nozzle you install performs in the target misting zone we discussed in the second video. So let's dive in. To build our understanding, we strung 50 nozzles in series, one after the other with no branches. Between each nozzle, we placed 10 feet of quarter inch tubing, which is pretty standard length between nozzles in an actual installation. We then hooked this nozzle circuit up to a pump and set the pressure to 250 PSI. Next, we took a very accurate digital pressure gauge, like this, and measured the pressure at every fifth nozzle, nozzle number five, nozzle number 10, nozzle number 15, and so on, until nozzle number 50, and then plotted a graph of the pressure on what we call a pressure curve. The 50 nozzle pressure curve looks like this. It starts at 250 PSI at the pump, and then slopes down pretty severely, and then begins to flatten out at about nozzle number 30. Now note the red line at minimum target pressure of 200 PSI. All the nozzles after number 10 are operating at less than 200 PSI. That's no good. What's going on? The answer is friction. As the fluid moves down the tubing, friction between the tubing wall and the fluid causes pressure loss. But why is the pressure loss greater at the beginning of the run, near the pump, at the left side of the chart, than it is at the middle where the line flattens out? For more insight, let's add another line to our chart. This time we took measurements on 20 nozzles in series and plotted its pressure curve. Let's compare the pressure we found at nozzle number 10 for each run. For the 20 nozzle run, the pressure drop between the pump and nozzle number 10 is only about 10 PSI. For the 50 nozzle run, it's closer to 60 PSI, yet both nozzles are the same distance away from the pump, 100 feet. What could explain that? It turns out that pressure drop in a segment of tubing increases as the flow through that segment increases. The more nozzles downstream of the segment, the higher the flow, and the greater the drop in pressure over that segment. Let's illustrate this with a chart. We took a 10-foot segment of tubing and measured the pressure loss from the beginning to end of that segment when there were 20 nozzles worth of flow going through it. The pressure loss was only about 1 PSI, no big deal. Then we added another 20 nozzles worth of flow, simulating 40 nozzles downstream of the segment. The pressure loss increased to about 3 PSI. So we've doubled the flow but tripled the pressure drop, but 3 PSI is still not too bad. We added another 20 and then another 20. With 80 nozzles worth of flow, the pressure drop over the 10-foot segment was 10 PSI. So now at four times the original flow, we're at 10 times the original pressure drop. We continue to add flow until we got to 140 nozzles worth, which as we saw in the first fundamentals video is about the capacity of the pump. Here the pressure drop in our 10 foot segment is 30 PSI. So we've now multiplied our starting flow by 7 times and the pressure drop has increased 30 times. What we've just illustrated is called the exponential relationship between pressure drop and flow. And it is very important for you to be aware of this phenomenon as you design your nozzle circuits. It explains why the pressure at nozzle number 10 is so much higher when it is in the 20 nozzle run than in the 50 nozzle run. The nozzle is the same distance from the pump, 100 feet, but the flow through that first 100 feet is much less in the 20 nozzle run than it is in the 50 nozzle run. And since the flow is less, the pressure drop is much, much less. It also explains why the 50 nozzle curve flattens out at around nozzle 30. Consider this system. With a pump and four nozzles, the flow out of each nozzle is represented with a letter, A through D. What is the flow in segment 1 between the pump and the first nozzle? That flow is equal to the flow of all the nozzles, A plus B plus C plus D, and the pressure drop in segment 1 reflects four nozzles worth of flow. How about segment 2? The flow through segment 2 is equal to B plus C plus D, and the pressure drop through segment 2 only reflects 3 nozzles worth of flow. And we know that pressure drop is less than in segment 1. You see the pattern here. As the fluid works its way down the nozzle circuit, the flow through each segment of tubing 
is progressively less as part of it is removed with each nozzle it passes and the pressure loss in each segment decreases. That's why the curves flatten out. So how can we make practical use of understanding this? Where will the flow and the pressure drop be the highest? Just downstream of the pump, right? So the easiest way to reduce pressure drop is to divide the flow coming out of the pump as near to the pump as you can. Let's turn that into a rule. So rule number three is tee the nozzle circuit as close to the pump as possible and divide the flow, which is another way of saying position the unit somewhere in the middle of the nozzle circuit rather than at the end. Okay, what else can we learn? Check out this important chart. Here we'll plot the pressure curve for a number of different run lengths. Remember our target minimum pressure is 200 PSI. Let's start with 10 nozzles in series, all well above the red line. Now let's add the 20 nozzle curve. Now the 30 nozzle curve. All the nozzles still have more than the minimum of 200 PSI, but getting close. Now let's add the 40, 50, and 60 nozzle curves. You see that a run length of 40 drops below the line, and runs of 50 and 60 nozzles are really far below it. For minimum acceptable pressure, let's split the difference between the 30 nozzle line and the 40 nozzle line at a single run max of 35 nozzles. So rule number four becomes, don't install any more than 35 nozzles in a single run of quarter inch tubing. In the next video, Pressure Drop 201, we'll add our last three rules.